Park selling in test tubes, little tu little vials, the original acoustics <laughs> from the Metropolitan <laughs> Opera. <laughs> but again, NBC Legal stepped in. <laughs> this was a kind of kind of environment. John's John's John would take so long. His his station IDs were six minutes. His commercials went on yeah. forever. And in fact. Uh, uh, the FCC was not too pleased with that. John was um, an original. Uh, Did John have a sense of how much of an original he was? And do you think he, up there, beaming down upon us, because I know his spirit lives in this building, has any sense of, of what he has meant to me and who knows how many countless other broadcasters? I don't think he could take compliments uh, very easily, I think, uh, or suffer fools, which is not to say either one of us. But, I mean, John, <laughs> no, John was... Um, John's a very cynical man. He had an eighth grade education, which he would use to entrap uh, those with the advanced uh, degrees from Harvard B School. I mean, he would, you know, I'm just a country boy kind of a thing. Uh, no, John never had a sense of that. He, uh, his life uh, was the hot mic, the open mic that he had. Um, he had, uh, in fact, it was in this building that he uh, taped his interviews with Malcolm X and. Uh, the one with George Lincoln Rockwell, the Nazi party leader, which NB, again NBC Legal said you couldn't put on the air because it was too hot, too full of you know, too full of dynamite. John had um, John was a little peculiar in many ways too. In other words, uh, remember him calling me at home one night from this station, saying he may quit. <laughs> and I said, why would he quit? He said they won't let me use the Xerox after midnight. He was going to so quit he, over Right. He was gonna, so he had his idiosyncrasies. He also coined two words, which mean, uh, may mean not very little to the listeners who uh, don't remember John, but to say someone was crazy, he came up with the term wackading hoy, which <laughs> meant nothing. And the other one, which still sounds uh, perfectly filthy for, to me and I love, is uh, up your hockey box. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the story about the night he decided to end it all. It was right here. John was going to commit suicide, uh, uh, which was gonna, actually was almost a, a weekly thing with John. I mean, John, John was very uptight about a medical exam uh, that was going to, it turns out it was a day late. He had, uh, he had a growth on his hand, which turned out to be, you know, a, I guess, a hand version of a cold sore. But at that time, he was convinced he had terminal cancer. So what John did, he called a number of us at uh, 2 in the morning and asked us to come in because he wanted to say goodbye. He was going to commit suicide. So we showed up, uh, a number of people, including a couple of psychologists, Hannah and Milton Caput, a couple of, one shrink was there, a couple of internists. I mean, John had a medical staff at his beck and call. And I happened to be on the uh, on the show with him and was sitting with him, and he was saying, look, I'm, I'm ending it all. I... He said, I, I will see you. I can't wait for these people to get here. And so at that time, about 3 in the morning, John started to walk out. It was a warm day. He didn't need a jacket. And he was going to walk over to the West Side Highway and jump off the highway. Somehow committed himself. <laughs> and as he started to walk out, he turned and said, wait a minute. And he took his Rolex off of his wrist. He says, hold this. <laughs> he didn't want to get mugged <laughs> on the way over to commit suicide. <laughs> so that's the kind of guy he was. Uh, the other thing is that uh, John engendered incredible loyalty because he built up a panel of, uh, quote, ordinary people, an insurance broker, uh, um, Al, Al, Ottman. Al Ottman, a plastic surgeon, Dr. Joe Constantino, Joe Constantino uh, uh, a printer, Gene Sanger. He had uh, Bob Carson on. He had... Uh, a lot of, he had two or three science fiction writers. Uh, he had lawyers. Uh, John also had the own. He was the only radio personality I know who had his dentist and urologist make house calls <laughs> because he was always too busy during the day to take care, as he would say, take care of business, normal business. And John was a was a unique personality. Uh, I met uh, my former wife through the show, which again I owe to John. Maybe not. And John was the father of my. Uh, oh, look! Speaking of that, that little kid. Now, how old is that little baby? There's a little baby that's, that's came. My, in. That's my little girl. That's this your daughter. Yeah. 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 Five and a half months. Before right. we interview the youngest guest right, we've ever had right. on the show, let me. I just want to <laughs> yeah. wrap this up with Long, about Long John. He he was the quintessential broadcaster, a gentleman. John, and, and, John uh, was innovative. a gentleman. John John was uh, one of a kind. Uh, he was a gentleman. I. I I opened it just to refresh, in case anybody wanted to. I brought in a copy of the book. Which is uh, Donald Bain's Donald, book on Long John Neville. Long John Neville, 
radio talking master salesman and magnificent charlatan. John insisted putting the word charlatan yeah. on the book, and that's the way we want to remember him. He had a he he had a, a sense of humor, but he didn't take himself that seriously. He took very few things seriously. And uh, John, who uh, died in, uh, on April 10th, 1978, uh, spent uh, nine years at this radio station. And uh, um, at his funeral, I'll just uh, sum it up this way, at, at the service at Walter B. Cook, a sightless, a blind woman was led over to meet me by her eight-year-old daughter. And she wanted to meet some of the people she had listened to over the years. And she said to me, you will never know what John meant to people like myself. For us, he was our friend at night. And that's what John Abel represented to uh, hundreds of thousands of people. Thank you, Sandy, for helping us remember one of the most important broadcasters in WNBC's history, Long John Abel. Stick around. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are WNBC for the, for the next, uh, what, 55 minutes? That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of a hush that's come over the room, hasn't it? You know what I would like to do? I, it is going to sound crazy. There's nothing I'd rather do than stay here and talk. But I want to do something. That's gonna, I want to go home and listen. I want to let the station go out the way I always want to remember it, listening to it on the radio. And so if you don't mind, that, that's, I'm a little sad right now. How can I let you leave? No, no, no. If you, if you say no, no, I won't. But I would love to hear at my home the last moments. Can we all come to the station? Can we come with you? <laughs> <laughs> let's all go to Brucey's house. Come on, let's go. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> You'll never get to Levertown by by the time the show's over. <laughs> I'm gonna. I would really like to do that. Would that's you mind? To do? If that's what you want to do, and that's why he want to pay tribute. Uh, I, I'm just yeah. delighted to have had you here for the time you've spent and to have met you because you know you are on my very first show on WNBC. Right, that's right. And and to have you here and to have known you as I have for the last few years has mm. meant a great deal to me. Uh, you are radio incarnate in New York Thank City. You. Thank you for being Alan, here today. Alan, you, you have become a friend, uh, not only on the air, but off the air. We have uh, been very close to each other. I think you are an excellent talent. There's no doubt in my mind that you will be back on these airwaves, and we will be hearing your harmonics uh, and your intelligence and your fun uh, on New York radio very, very shortly. And uh, I look forward to being sharing microphones with you, but I want to go home, and I want to listen to this. I, I mean, I'm a radio fan. You see, you got to understand that. Cousin Bruce is a big fan of radio. I really am. So I have to do what I have to do. Bruce, thank you for okay. being here today. Cousin Bruce, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bruce Moore. And, and Joe McCoy, yeah. who is uh, carrying uh, Bruce's train. <laughs> and uh, see, uh, Joe's got Bruce's bags, and we'll be leaving the I'm studio. Gonna, with actually, Brucey just uh, mm -hmm. thought of a great money-making scheme, and that's why we're leaving it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah these mics will be down. <laughs> Joe, very nice to meet you. Thank it's you for being here today, Joe McCoy, ladies and gentlemen. I want to. I want to go home and listen. To NBC 66 in one, less than an hour because I want to hear them say scumbag for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to happen when Pete Franklin comes on. You know, he uses it all the time. And I've never heard it yet on uh, on NBC, but we'll hear it for the first time. What a glowing in an hour. What a glowing tribute. Right. I, I cannot handle it. Well, no, hey, I'm being honest. Hey. Down on this that's station. right. <laughs> Ted, uh, Ted, you're going to have to be in the That's right. Ted, you know, you've been a major influence to me and I'm sure many others. And I, it means the world to me to have a microphone to share with you this afternoon. Thank I must tell you something. That's, I think it's very appropriate that, that uh, 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 not, I can't want to say Donna. Judy. You know? Judy. Judy. Because I work with Donna over at NW. The Donna's baby is here, you know? Judy. Judy's baby is here. Is that your kid? Are you sure it's yours? Right. Because I want to tell you, that baby represents the, the, the new blood that's going to happen around, around here, but also with you two, because I want to tell you, you are just brilliant. And if you're not, you want, you want to take a vacation and enjoy it because you're going to have a great job when you come back. Thank you. Ted Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll uh, take a break on WNBC. Alan Combs. Every day, it's like my family's on a merry-go-round. So whatever else I do, every day I make sure they eat right and get their one-a-day vitamins. It has all the essential vitamins and minerals they need. And now they've made one-a-day maximum formula even better with beta-carotene, the nutrients from fruits and vegetables that most of us don't get enough of. And isn't it just like one-a-day to give us more beta-carotene than any other leading brand? I think they did it just for us. One-a-day every day, because your health is number one. Thanks, Mom. 
Jimmy Breslin just switched to New York Newsday from the Daily News. I began to notice that New York Newsday was getting stories that no one else was going to have that day and getting them by the only way you can get them, by walking, climbing, driving, roaming the landscape and coming up with things that do not come from official sources. You're looking for completeness of coverage. There's no question that New York Newsday is the paper that's doing that the best. And I came for that reason. Jimmy Breslin switched to New York Newsday. How about you? British Airways wants me to tell all you globe-trotting Americans that it's high time to take off on one of their superb European holidays. Now 10% off for a limited time. What a perfectly splendid offer, I said. The British Isles wreathed in golden harvest light. Europe replete with echoes of the ancients. Yes, charming, they said, but what in fact we've got to communicate is that British Airways has hundreds of flexible European land arrangements at 10% off. London, Paris, Dublin, Rome, 10% off. Theatres, hotels, transport, 10% off. Well, I'm pleased to report that we've reached a compromise. For hard facts and figures on British Airways holidays at 10% off, call your travel agent or 1-800-876-2200 right now. However, for 10% off a radiant European sojourn, call 1-800-876-2200 at a quiet moment when inspiration tugs at your sleeve, and not a moment sooner. You must book and pay for your holiday by October 31st. Other significant restrictions apply. A brief word from TWA and American Express about the word quality. These days, companies talk about quality so much that people in business may wonder what it really means anymore. At TWA, quality means we pay 30 people to fly with us as professional passengers. They're our quality control team, and they report directly to the chairman on what's good and what needs improving from a checklist of 140 service items. It's just one way we're working to give you the best service in the air. At American Express, quality means working to serve card members around the world and around the clock. For instance, if you lose your card, you can usually have it replaced within one business day. It's one reason frequent business flyers rate the American Express card the best for business travel and entertainment. But that's enough talk about quality. When you fly TWA and carry the American Express card, we think you'll find our service speaks for itself. Dodge dealer, you'll see it in the wide range of Dodge quality cars and trucks we sell, and in everything we do. See your Dodge dealer today, where the new spirit shows. The WNBC Traffic and Transit Network uh, comes our way in a moment, brought to us by 9X Mobile Communications. 9X Mobile, Lauren speaking. 9X Mobile, Leslie speaking. 9X Mobile, Glenn speaking. And Don Crickey speaking for 9X Mobile Communications. With our automatic call distributor, over 95% of our calls to customer service are answered on the first ring, with the remaining 5% answered within 8 seconds. But just as important as how quickly we answer you is how well we answer your needs. I'd recommend the weekend plan for you, Mr. Carruthers. Sure, you can use your mobile phone in Red Deer, Canada. I'll get the access code for you. To activate call forwarding, Miss Fenster, press clear, now the star, and then... You don't have to know all the answers because 9X customer consultants like Lauren Glenn and Leslie do. And if they don't, they'll get them for you. Call 1-800-443-BELL. That's 1-800-443-BELL or look for us in the 9X Yellow Pages. For mobile communications, the answer is 9X. And with the latest from the WNBC Traffic and Transit Network, here's Judy D'Angelo. Thank you for reminding me, Alan. North 
southbound BQE very slow from the Gowanus Expressway to Atlantic Avenue and again from the Brooklyn Bridge to the Williamsburg Bridge. A disabled tractor trailer has been cleared. Volume continuing to be slow approaching the Kosciuszko Bridge. Southbound side sluggish from Tillery Street to the Brooklyn Bridge and once more between Atlantic Avenue and the Gowanus Expressway. Outbound Holland Tunnel and Lincoln Tunnel 15 to 20 minute delays. Inbound at the Lincoln and GWB a 15 to 20 minute time. Inbound Holland Tunnel only a five minute wait. Obviously that's your best bet. Outbound Queens Midtown Tunnel a 15 minute delay. Brooklyn Battery Tunnel a 10 minute outbound delay. Outbound Brooklyn and Manhattan Bridges have heavy volume but it is moving across the spans. We'll be back in 15 minutes with the last. WNBC traffic. Ooh, all right, this is the last. Uh... Now, and actually, for a lot of people, they're going, "Yay, the last one!" No, finally. I'm. Um, I was applauding because I just think we should applaud. I think we should be joyous because oh, yeah. I, I think that. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. And uh, you know, Terrific with idea. only uh, 44, 45 minutes left. Uh, yeah, just let me reiterate, you can't in four hours encompass a 66-year history. But we've had some wonderful people with us today. If you just joined us, this is WNBC's last day ever on the air. GE, the parent company, has uh, disowned us and is getting out of uh, radio broadcasting. We talked to Bill Cullen today and uh, Ed McMahon and Lee Leonard and Cousin Brucey was here, Ted Brown, Big Wilson, uh, Joe McCoy. Sandy Teller is here with rem remembrances about uh, Long John Neville. Uh, Bob Pittman, Larry King, who was not part of the station, but is such a similar influ seminal influence uh, in radio. Uh, Brad Crandall did his famous sign-off for us. Oh, that was moving, I want you to know. I was crying. Uh, Buffalo Bob Smith and uh, still to come, uh, Bob Fitzsimmons, Wolfman Jack. <sighs> With us in the studio, Judy DeAngelis. Uh, uh, we have uh, Mike Harrison of h, h Broadcasting, who is a uh, owner of a broadcasting group. He is a radio analyst, a radio scientist. Uh, he is the founder of Good Phone Communications, which was a, one of America's leading radio syndicators, former morning man on NEWFM, and uh, a great radio mind. Uh, I can see Brucey and Ted Brown have left. They wanted to do it up right. They wanted to listen to it on the radio the last yeah. uh, few minutes. Um, you can't do that. No, I can't do that. You stick We're on delay. I can run out here the last seven seconds. <laughs> right. Um, You'll hear the chimes. That's about right. it. And uh, joining us in the studio now, another former voice from WNBC, Bill Rock. Yeah. Should I do the radio, ID? Radio, now, do, do it the way <laughs> yeah. you did it, okay? Uh, try to remember how I did that, actually. 50,000 watts clear channel. This is the flagship station of the National Broadcasting Company, WNBC, New York. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bill, now before we before we talk to you more in depth, let's say hello to the Wolfman, Wolfman Jack, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Wolfman. How are you, man? How are you? Oh, just fine. I'm, I'm in between planes here. You're in an airport? You're the second airport call. We've had Larry King was in an airport. Really? Yeah. Well, anyway, I just wanted to to, uh, to say how sad I was that NBC is going. You know what I mean? I do. WNBC means a lot to me, man. You were here, uh, and you know, Cousin Brucey just left. You were brought in to go head-to-head -head with Cousin Brucey back in uh, the 1970s. Yeah, you remember those days we planted a tombstone in front of WNBC? Yeah, we heard it. We talked about that. And you know, we beat him. You beat cousin, you beat cousin Brucey? Yes, we did. <laughs> we finally we finally we, we, we won and, and then cousin Brucey came over and joined WNBC. That's right. And did you and Brucey ever become friends or was there some animosity between you? No, I don't want to get him to join WNBC. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So so you and he Who am I talking to right now? This is Alan Cole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought well, we didn't know what the hell was going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> you didn't know about that man. No, I did know about that. Oh, I see. <laughs> And, uh, of course, then your, your syndicated show was carried overnights on WNBC yeah, uh, a few and, years ago. Uh, of course, I listened to WNBC when I was a little kid, too, you know. That's right. Did you? That's that, right. You, you actually grew up in Brooklyn. Is that right? That's right. I used to sit on the radio every night when, you know, uh, there was somebody. Who was it? Uh, I can't remember now who was on the air then. And, anyway, I'm going to miss WNBC, but, you know, one thing that's going to keep it around is Imus is still on the air, right? Well, Imus will be joining the new company, which is WFAN, which is Emmis Broadcasting. Right. NBC will be out of the radio business, and there'll be no more radio from 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Is that right? That's right. There'll be no more. NBC will have nothing more to do with radio on any level. You're kidding. Well, they don't know what the hell they're doing, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you've summed it up, Wolfman. I think uh, in a few words you've uh, expressed the sentiments of some people in this room. Uh, you certainly are a big part of radio 
now and radio history and what WNBC has been. And I'm so glad you could share a few moments with us this afternoon. Well, listen, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really sad about it. I mean, I, the, the NBC people really did a great job when they were doing it. I'm sorry they're getting out of the business. Does that mean they get, they, they're out of the TV business and the radio business? No, they'll, be, they'll be in TV, uh, but they'll no longer be in the radio business. Well, listen, man, I, I, I give my best to everybody. Say hi to everybody for me. And, uh, well, I, you know, what can I say? I'm, I'm sad about it. Wolfman, thank you very much for being here today, and thank you for all you've contributed to WNBC. All right, baby. Bye. Thank you. Wolfman Jack, ladies and gentlemen. The Wolfman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's on the cutting edge of the New York, you know, the, uh, the New York Times. This guy watches CNN, right? Clap for the work, man. I only wish you could have talked to somebody who knew what was happening. All right. Uh, we were what, talking... Stereo radio? <laughs> That's funny. Radio City Bill is here. Now, how did you take that? You took the name Radio City Bill. No, I, you I, I was given the name. Actually, uh, Bill Rock is my real name. Uh huh. And People would think that would be a great radio name, of yeah. course. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I've had it changed many times. When I was in Pittsburgh, it was Sean Grabowski. <laughs> <laughs> when I worked at the old WWDJ, they called me Chuck Cooper. Then when I came here, I finally figured, here I am at NBC in New York, and finally used my real name. You know, my parents can know I'm still alive. And as it turned out, there was a program director named John Lund who stood there and towered over me as I was sitting there as a young fledging disc jockey saying, Bill, we're not a rock station, so we're going to call you Radio City Bill Rockefeller. And my name is in there, if you look very closely. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as John left and I became uh, program director, I changed my name to Bill Rock again. <laughs> you were the boss. Yeah, yeah, for a while anyway. And what are your current activities? Well, uh, I'm doing a show with the United Stations Radio Network nationally called Motor City Beat. And uh, I'm also uh, still at WYNY, which is the... What was the FM? The W uh, it was WNBC FM. Then at one time. Then W. Uh, what was it? Well, uh, that became WYNY. It yeah. became WYNY, yeah. but it was the all news before that for the oh, NIS. WNWS. WNWS and WYNY. And uh, I also have my own production company. I've produced a couple of television shows, and I do video for corporations and that sort of thing. Well, Bill, so. thank you very much for coming by here today and stopping in to see us. And you are one of the great voices in the great history of this radio station. Well, thank you. It's uh, it's going to be very difficult not to be in this building of having having come here. 11 of the last 15 years and had not seen any radio. We're yeah. going to be across the street over there. It's this going to be a big Broadway. void on two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bill Thank Rock. Thank you very much, John. Uh, let me just have a word with Dan Taylor because I got a bone to pick with Dan Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Taylor. Uh, wherever Dan Taylor goes, Emmis follows and buys the place and yeah. fires everybody. Well, that's the, one of the jokes around here that we do two things about Jeff. He, he ever liked country and didn't like the name Dan. That's right. So, uh, you, you are, and I have known each other for many, many years, mm -hmm. and I kid you a lot, but I want to tell you, behind that kidding is complete sincerity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. But, uh, you are, of course, a current voice on WNBC, and, uh, I, I've worked with you in many different places, mm -hmm. many different ways, and I'll, and I'll, I'll miss being with you because, uh, you are very good at what you do. You are a great disc jockey. Well, I'm going to miss you too, Alan. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, said, so, gee whiz, you know, you're always joking about Alan. Alan's always joking about you. You guys really don't get along, and, as Alan was just joking before, we really do. We've known each other for about 11 years, I think, in the business. Yeah. And uh, you are one of my cherished true friends in the business. Okay. Thank I you, promise babe. the next radio station I work at, you won't be there or I won't be where you are because, uh, I won't, you know, I don't want to jinx you or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Dan Taylor, who uh, is a part of the current WNBC. And we'll come back. I, 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 wish we, I hope we have some time to get to these telephones and talk to our listeners because it is, after all, the listener for whom we exist. And we'll come back in a moment on WNBC. <laughs> No better. Uh, Paul Bunyan? Uh, you want to step to your left a couple feet? Thanks. I guess all this tree chopping really works up an appetite, huh, big guy? Rightio. In fact, right after I level Wisconsin here, I'm going to drop by the International House of Pancakes for breakfast. For pancakes? For the whole menu. Oh. Six or seven of those big International House of Pancakes three-egg omelet, ah. dozen waffles, uh -huh. blintzes, uh -huh. crepes. Uh -huh. You know they got more variety at breakfast than Minnesota's got lakes. And those pancakes. Lots of them. So you'd recommend the International House of Pancakes for good food and lots of it? Well, let's just say it beats the off one of those wimpy little fast food biscuits. Nicely put. Yeah. Uh, say, babe, how about a thick, juicy steak and eggs? Oh, 
You don't want to go teasing the babe. All right. Now get an all-American country ham and egg special, including orange juice, hash browns, and their famous buttermilk pancakes for just uh, three ninety nine. Serve Monday through Friday at the IHOP nearest you. We're on WNBC. Uh, we have with us uh, Judy DeAngelis, her young child. How old is the kid? Five and a half months. Katie's what a already, happy... She's already playing with my headphones. I'm in trouble. Why does the kid look like Imus? <laughs> <laughs> but so do you. Yeah. Mike Harrison from H&H &H Broadcasting. Who uh, is here with kind of an overview of uh, radio. He has worked in radio in many areas, in many ways. Kind of an expert on AM radio. Sandy Teller from the Long John Neville Show. Manny Gelt is here. We're going to tell you who he is in a moment. Charles McCord from Hi. the I Miss in the Morning radio program. Hi, Alan. Charles, you are great. Thank you very much. I Miss couldn't live without you. Oh, I think he probably could and rather successfully. I doubt it. <laughs> is this he a, needs you. Is, is, is this... I mean, how do you feel today? Numb. It, is this a weird day or what? Yeah. But well, how do you feel? Because you're, unlike most of us, going on to the new station. I'm a survivor, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found anything yet? <laughs> you're crazy. No, but it's... it's uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to sit down in this chair one last time. Yeah, this is the chair that you use on yeah. the show. Yeah. And, uh, and we spray before I come in in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and, and wisely so. But this has been uh, my broadcast home for 17 years. As you know, yes. and so it's 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 a melancholy day. What are you doing, Alan? Just, uh, touching the knees of some I, of the men sitting next to me. I don't it's understand just, that. Uh, <laughs> but I just I just wanted to come in and say goodbye to you because you are truly uh, in a, in a serious moment, in a serious vein, a talented, gifted, gifted man. And if if somebody doesn't snap you up immediately. I'm going to be disappointed. Your audience is going to be disappointed. This entire metropolitan region. And the reason he says that is because I have to go live with Chuck and his uh, and his wife. <laughs> I have to go live with you if I have no place to go. So you're a, you're a gifted talent or, or a talented gift. <laughs> or something. And I I admire and respect your work very much. Well, thank you, Charles. This is unlike you. I know it is. <laughs> and, uh, and that's it. And, and that, that's my 30 seconds, and thank you. Well, Charles, after 17 years, you certainly deserve a few last moments on WNBC to do anything you want to do, because you are a 17-year part of this radio station. I just want to tell the National Broadcasting Company and WNBC goodbye, and uh, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Well. Charles thank McCord, ladies and gentlemen. Chuck McCord. Uh, now, now I've had this uh, this representative who comes on to me sometimes called uh, Manny Gelt, who is really. Hi, Charles. Thank you. Hi, Roz. Hi. Sit down for a second. Manny Gelt is who are you really, Manny? I'm really me, Alan. <laughs> Manny Gelt is a figment of. You are the quintessential. Well, we, we make you into this quintessential agent, right? This. Uh, well, if you remember how it developed, I'm really, truly your personal manager. That's right. And it yeah. developed uh, at the other station. <laughs> right. One morning when uh, I came to watch you, I had just started working with you, and I came to watch you, and you were about to go on the air in five minutes, and you were making fun of my youth and how I didn't fit the stereotype of the the manager with the pinky ring and the cigar. Right. And uh, we decided to make into the manager came up with that voice. Ring came up with that voice. And Darling, thought, I love you. How do we go on? And you said, "Well, we need a name for him." And you thought it was born. Ladies and gentlemen, my career is in this man's hands. It's uh, true. It's, it's true. kind of scary, isn't it? Well, uh, no, actually, you know, when I got to play Manny, I got to say all sorts of nasty things about you, which was kind of fun because I meant most of them. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, that's not true. I, everything that I said, I really felt the opposite. You know, we've been together a long time now, yeah. about forty years, I think. <laughs> yeah. and. Uh, you really are extraordinarily talented. I'm very proud to tell people that I that I manage you, and we've had a really thank you extraordinary relationship. I appreciate and that, but you know, th these last moments are not a tribute to me. This is this is really a tribute to do to NBC. Yeah, and but to I think NBC. it's fair that it should part of it should be a tribute to you too. This is the end of your show, and uh, uh, there's a lot of wonderful people that have been here. I think a lot of people came by about you and. And uh, a lot of them we had a bleep off, which I understood, <laughs> which is certainly acceptable. Um, but I promise your listeners that uh, if it's up to me, and I think part of it is, and part of it to you, that you will be on the air again very, very Thank soon. You very People much. will be able to tune in and find you. Thank you. Oh, the it may be radio-free Guam, but I promise Thank you. Thank you so much, you will and be on the thank air. the four of you who are applauded. We'll come back in just a moment, <laughs> minute after 5 o'clock at WNBC. This is news. From 66 WNBC, New York. I'm Doug O'Brien. Here's what's happening at 501. Well, well, well. Robin Givens says she's dumping Mike Tyson. 
WNBC's Julia Hernandez reports on the knockout blow to the marriage of the heavyweight and the actress. Eight months to the day after they got married, Robin Givens is filing for divorce from Mike Tyson. That from her lawyer, Marvin Mitchelson. Mitchelson says Givens also wants a restraining order to keep Tyson away from his wife and will cite irreconcilable differences as the reason for the breakup. The brief marriage has been plagued by problems and gotten plenty of media attention. Tyson's volatile temper making headlines a number of times. The latest incident was Sunday when Givens and her mother, Ruth Roper, fled the couple's Bernardsville, New Jersey mansion because as Iron Mike was reportedly throwing furniture through the windows. I'm Julia Hernandez, WNBC News. There are a lot of politicos in New York that would love to give a knockout punch to Mayor Koch. It looks like Mayor Koch may have a tough time come the 1989 mayoral election. Koch plans on seeking a fourth term, but Governor Cuomo says he may not support him in the Democratic primary. Cuomo told the Daily News it's Koch against Koch, and Koch is losing. The governor says he won't support anyone in the primary and might not back him in November either. Koch didn't disagree with the governor on his re-election chances. I'm my own worst enemy, the mayor said, and everybody knows that. Mitch Levy, WNBC News. Now, if the mayor loses his job, it might be just about the only change in the unemployment figures around here. The Labor Department reports unemployment in New York and New Jersey was virtually unchanged between August and September. The jobless rate in both states is 4%, but that's still running less than the national average of 5.4%. And last month, that improved a bit as more Americans found jobs. Catherine Smith, WNBC News. Nationally, unemployment has fallen and payrolls have grown. The Labor Department says joblessness declined to 5.4% at the same time that 255,000 more jobs opened up. George Bush is telling voters that crime is the issue on which he is at most odds with Michael Dukakis. The vice president charges that his Democratic rival has an astounding lack of sensitivity to crime victims. Campaigning in Ohio today, Bush called the criminal justice system in Massachusetts completely out of whack. Dukakis says he'll continue to call Republican Dan Quayle unfit for the vice presidency. And he calls Bush weak for selecting the Indiana senator for the GOP ticket. The Democratic presidential candidate is also telling voters that they shouldn't entrust Supreme Court selections to a man who would pick Quayle as a running mate. The Dukakis campaign is echoing those themes in a pair of new television commercials. WNBC News Time 504. This news sponsored by Cooper Tire. See Hank and Chubby Source at North Arlington Tire, 338 River Road in North Arlington, New Jersey. A Cooper Tire dealer is after the same quality and value you are. A Cooper dealer's reputation depends on quality and value. That's what keeps his customers coming back for more. And that's why he carries precision-crafted Cooper tires. For quality tires that are right on the money, see your Cooper tire dealer today. Art Kalen at Rally Tire and Auto Service, 616 Connecticut Avenue, Norwalk. Time now for the Jim Brady Ad Age Marketing Report. For 24 consecutive years, Procter & Gamble spent more money buying advertising than any other American company. They bought more TV commercials, more newspaper and magazine pages, year in, year out. Now there's a new champ, the annual Ad Age Survey says that Philip Morris is now the single biggest advertiser in America. Last year, they spent more than one and a half billion dollars convincing you and me to buy what Philip Morris makes. It's not just cigarettes. Philip Morris owns General Foods. It owns Miller Beer. Procter & Gamble fell to number two, 1.4 billion, which is still very serious money unless you live at home and take your lunch to work. General Motors, the third biggest American advertiser. Then Sears Roebuck, RJR Nabisco. PepsiCo is number six. Coke doesn't appear in the top ten, which surprised me. Jim Brady, Advertising Age. At 506 WNBC wants you to know, if you must be on the road after drinking, go as a passenger. Give yourself and others a break. If you drive, don't drink. And if you drink, don't drive. 
From the WNBC Traffic and Transit Network, here's Judy DeAngelis. Thank you, Doug. Outbound Holland Tunnel and Lincoln Tunnel, 20-minute delay inbound at the Lincoln at 20-minute time. Five-minute wait inbound Holland GWB, 30-minute backup both ways. WNBC Sports Game 3 of the National League Playoffs tonight at Shea. Ron Darling versus John Tudor in the NHL. The Islanders play in Edmonton. WNBC weather tonight. Cloudy and cool, a low in the low 40s. Mostly cloudy and chilly tomorrow. 40% chance of light rain, a high in the low 50s. On Sunday, partly cloudy and cool. Currently, it's 52 degrees. And to Al Angeloro, John Bohannon, Danielle Campbell, Karen Carson, Frank Cipolla, Lillian Colon, Judy DeAngelis, Tony DeHero, Jane Dornacker, Jim Meyer, Pat Farnack, Donna Fiducia, Roz Frank, Jane Gennaro, Ann Grossi, Debbie Gross, Sam Hall, Mike Hyde, Julia Hernandez, Meredith Hollis, Mitch Levy, Shelley Lewis, Cameron Ledestri, Charles McCord, Bernard McGurk, Bill Marr, Denise Marzano, Mike Moss, Elena Nakather, Jack O'Rourke, Claudia Pauly, Liz Pressman, Terry Raskin, Larry Scott, Neil Seavey, Barry Sheffield, Catherine Smith, Catherine Stella, Bill Tui, Ken Voigt, and Alan Walden, and all the others I've never met who participated in WNBC News and public affairs since 1922, the sound that makes this radio station more important than any other. And so, for the very last time, that's what's happening. I'm Doug O'Brien, WNBC, New York. WNBC remembers 66 years of New York's most memorable radio. This is the National Broadcasting Company. WNBC has been known in recent years as the station that brought contemporary, irreverent personalities to New York radio. This is not a new phenomena, however. As WEAF in the 1930s, we broadcast America's brightest stars from coast to coast on NBC. Hmm, sure is dark tonight. No moon. Oh, well. Hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? You got a match? Yes. Yes, I have one right here. Don't make a move. This is a stick-up. Mister, put down that gun. Shut up. I said this is a stick-up. Now, come on. Your money or your life. <laughs> Look, bud. I said your money or your life. I'm thinking it over. One of the best-loved entertainers of the 30s was a real dummy. Hello, Mr. Fields. Hello, blood poison. <laughs> You know, Charlie really loves you, Mr. Fields. Yes, I do. But I don't think Mr. Fields loves me. Now, listen, that's gone far enough. <laughs> I've been a gentleman up to now. <laughs> Why, what's the matter, Bill? Well, he's not going to tell me I don't love him. <laughs> I'll break every knot in his body. The programs of this era mark the zenith of radio's golden years. But for WEAF, they were only part of a 66-year legacy that would see the station continue to lead the broadcast media through an ongoing evolution towards excellence. This is it, huh? Last half hour ever for WNBC. I'm Alan Combs, and we're going to do our last commercial break ever on this radio station. Remember the first one back in 1926? Sure you do. <laughs> this, this is going to be our last commercial break, and this will be the last live commercial ever read. And, and who's, the lucky, on who's the lucky recipient? You, Judy. You want to do it? No, 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 no. I mean, who's the lucky... Uh, uh, Sealy Dollar Mattress. Yeah! yeah. Now, here's the deal. You call <laughs> you call them up, and they deliver a mattress to wherever you are within two hours. Even Shea Stadium? <laughs> yeah, that concrete get kind of tough, and I hope I miss... Well, never mind. Uh, well, I miss and Pete Franklin will be out at uh, Shea Stadium, and they will be Ooh, taking things... Wait a minute. He couldn't leave. He Bruce, couldn't leave. I knew Bruce, it. what happened? I went downstairs, and I started crying a little bit. I said, I can't leave him alone. <laughs> Alone? <I'd> come back. <laughs> but look at what Uncle is doing here. Can you get a cab, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see what it is. Can you call me a cab, Alan, please? <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's listening in a taxi, please. Cousin Bercy, uh, you know, it's it's very hard to pry him toward a microphone. He's uh, hard to drag out of his shell. I'm so glad that we could do this today. Uh, this is the very last live commercial ever on WNBC. And it's a Priscilla Dial-A-Mattress. 
Isn't that interesting? It's a talk about going to sleep. <laughs> uh, there's, some, there's, there's, there's symmetry in the universe. Uh, they've slashed their prices on an incredible selection of Sealy bedding. You can save up to 60% off department store regular prices. They're one of the largest selections of Sealy mattresses and box springs in New York and New Jersey. And they specialize in service. Just call them anytime Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Place your order. Within two hours, you'll have a Sealy delivered to your home. Pay the driver after you've approved the mattress. And if for any reason you're not satisfied, the driver will take the mattress back. And for a limited time, when you buy any Sealy Posturepedic set... <laughs> We're talking real limited yeah. here, okay? Mention WNBC. <laughs> limited, okay? How much longer can you mention WNBC? And you'll get a luxurious set of cannon sheets and pillowcases, a $60 value, absolutely free. Mm -hmm. Your new Sealy bedding is just a phone call away. So for super service and extraordinary savings on super Sealy bedding from the 212... 201 or 516 area, just style mattress, M-A-T-T-R-E-S, which is not how you spell it. No, that's right. That's <laughs> There's an extra S. Leave off the last S. For what? For the... So long. <laughs> for Emmis. <laughs> 512 at WNBC. Look, we can do this grocery shopping fast if you help me. I'll get the TV guy magazine. I'll get the produce and meat, and you pick up soup and coffee. I'll get the TV guy. Uh, okay, everybody who's perfect can turn off their radios for the next 60 seconds. All right, now for the rest of us. You should know about Channel's unconditional return policy, because if you're... There's no better place, any place. Visit most luxury automobile dealerships and you're likely to hear a lot of talk about things like bloodlines and image and noble, which brings up an important point. When you're shopping for cars and listening to the people who sell them, don't forget to listen to the people who drive them. Acura. Precision crafted performance. When Sears brings you a value like this, we call it a great item. Imagine a 19-inch cable-ready color TV with on-screen readout of time and channel, 17-key remote control, precise quartz tuning, and more. Now imagine all that at a price like this, just $258. You save $91. Right now, Sears can bring you a TV with all that for $258, only through Saturday. Look for Sears' great item stamp of approval, now at Sears. You know, for the next 12 minutes, we're commercial free. <laughs> WNBC and uh, with us uh, Judy DeAngelis of course uh, Mike Harrison from H&H &H Broadcasting a, a seminal influence in progressive rock radio coined the term AOR he went on to work with Billboard and one of the original editors of Radio and Records with a kind of an overview here this afternoon Sandy Teller from the Long John Neville show uh, Rory Rosegarten is here we have uh, Jane Gennaro is with us uh, Jane Gennaro ladies and gentlemen but uh, let me get, before we talk to you, Jane, let's go to the telephone and say hello to Gabe Pressman. Hi, Gabe. Hey, hi. How are you, Al? How are you? Nice to have you with us today. Well, it's uh, a mixed, I have mixed feelings about being with you. I, uh, I feel sad. We all do, and it is, it is mixed feelings, and uh, I'm sure you have some special memories about WNBC. Yes, I remember uh, the first day I, I came aboard, which was uh, November 8th, 1954. And uh, how I ran around town with a, a little uh, tape recorder, one of the earliest portable tape recorders that worked by uh, by muscle power. You had to had to wind it. <laughs> we still use those here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first story you covered? Uh, no, but I think it probably was a fire. Because in the early days, uh, the uh, network news department didn't know what to do with me, and uh, they, I would I would have to sort of find out what was happening, and then run out and, and get it. I remember one day um, there was a bulletin that came over the wires, and they didn't pay any attention to it because they weren't used to having a local reporter, a reporter who actually covered news in New York, and. Uh, I came in and I looked at this thing and I said, my God, how long have you had this? And the lead was uh, Serge Rubenstein, international financier, has, has been found strangled in his, uh, strangled to death in his uh, uh, Fifth Avenue uh, townhouse. Uh -huh. And the guy on the desk who wasn't too hip about, about reporters said, uh, well, he's dead, ain't he? Uh, what, what can we do with it? <laughs> it was... Uh, it was early. It was early on, and, and a lot of a lot of it was rip and read, and, and relying on newspapers and rewrites of newspapers and wire services rather than uh, 
putting our own shoe leather on the street. Boy, Gabe, I can hear in your voice the sentiment we're all feeling here in the studio right now about... It's so sad that NBC has decided to dismantle the... Well, actually, GE made the decision to dismantle the radio empire. Yeah, well, I think... I think um, they, 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 those were important years when Bill Cohen had Pulse on WNBC and when uh, we really were, were the first, the pioneers uh, at WNBC in covering on-the-spot news in, uh, in New York. It really was, it really was uh, a new beginning. It's hard to imagine a time when there wasn't competition among radio and television stations in New York, but it was only 30 years ago, 34 years ago, uh, that that existed, that uh, we didn't have many reporters. In fact, uh, the fellow who hired me, when I said someday there will be competition, he said, oh, get that out of your head. This is show business. You're just a gimmick. <laughs> and, and actually, uh, we have seen a growth of comp competition, and lamentably, uh, you know, we're seeing the end of a... <laughs> of a station that did stand for news in the earliest days in terms of, of that tradition. Gabe, you are just about the best reporter in New York, and I'm delighted to share these last moments with you. Thank you very much for talking to us today. It's a pleasure uh, being with you. Thank you. Gabe Pressman, ladies and gentlemen. Cousin Bruce, he came back. He couldn't take it. He couldn't get a cab or something. Or he, <laughs> yeah. You was, know why I came back. I know why you came on, back. Come on, you know why, and everyone listening knows why I came back. Jane Gennaro is here. Mm -hmm. Jane, uh, you and I did traffic. You did traffic, and I <laughs> I watched. <laughs> I like watching you, Jane. You uh, I said, cause you scared. Try to get near a microphone, Jane. You know, that's why I'm you haven't sorry, been hurt lately. Why here I you go. Been no, let's thank you, Bruce. Come close to me, Jane. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Like, lean on my shoulder, Jane. I'd like yeah. to say, Kaziasco, just one more time. I never... And Guanis. May I say, please, good luck and rubbernecking with rubbernecking delays. Well, Jane and her good? husband use these words regularly in their <laughs> personal relationship. And <laughs> Judy, how are you feeling right now? <sighs> Numb, I think. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, I, well, we're almost there. But anyway, listen, um, we shouldn't be sad. We should be happy. I don't know the, why the hell we should be happy, well, but we should be happy. <laughs> well, but I just want, I just, really, I just want to say one thing. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. It is WNBC. But you're a hell of a person, and thank you for letting me have such a good time with you. Thank tonight. you very much. Yeah. You're the best. Thank you. Let me say a few words to Peg Kelly, our Vice President General Manager. Yeah. Peg Kelly. Uh, you said you were going to say a few words to me, Alan. I said to you I wasn't going to say a few words. This is no time to clam up. <laughs> no, it's been a delight so working for you. You are a, a wonderful lady, and you've given me the creative freedom that any broadcaster dreams about. Oh, well, thanks very much. Uh, it was easy to do it for you, Alan. You're great. And uh, this, whole, this whole group is great, and I, I, I don't think there's one more person who could fit into this room. But everybody who's here belongs here, and, and the people out there uh, standing by the glass belong here, too. And, uh, well, we're celebrating in a way, as Judy says. Thank you, Peg. And then Peg is the last Vice President, General Manager.